but it, yeah, I had a good time. I was good, man. I made A's because I was studying. Because I, I always read all of these books about the the uh, slaves and people didn't want the slaves to get education. And uh, also, my mother is very educated and she's smart. And my father, he just he would always talk to us like we were grown men. So, I mean, just the content of his conversation. So we never knew what he was talking about half the time. We'd just be going, "Yeah, yeah okay." Like you, you ask your daddy just something basic. Oh, daddy, can I have a dollar? Then he'll go into like a discussion. Well, you know, man, uh, sometimes. <laughs> So I, I believed in studying just because I knew that education was a privilege. And it wasn't so much the, necessarily the information that you were studying, but just the discipline of study. To get into the habit of doing something you don't want to do to receive the information, and then eventually you start to like it. I always like to read. My mother would make sure that we read. So I read a lot of books. And, uh, and, and I would do good in school, mainly because I hated to do bad. I would read. Uh, mainly books like about uh, junior junior books. Like I remember, there would be books about the basketball players in Indiana, like little high school competition books. And uh, I, I didn't read any classic books. Like I read only I, think, what, I read books on Indians too. Like they had a whole biography series of, on different Indians, and, and I would read about their life story. And about states like the state of New Mexico, the state of Alabama, the state of New, of of, uh, of Louisiana, and then uh, I would read all of the black books, like uh, autobiography of Malcolm X, and Soul on Ice. My father had uh, had those books, but I, I would read a wide range of of things. It, mainly, I like biographies to read about somebody's life or read about the geographical location. Like Australia was my favorite continent because I read about the koala bear and marsupials and the eucalyptus trees. You know, I missed when I was like seven and eight and nine. And I'll be saying, yeah, one day I'm going to go to Australia and I'm going to be able to hold a koala bear and the kangaroos jumping up and on and the aborigines and the didgeridoo and just that kind of stuff. But as I grew older, then I started reading more books. Like I, I would read collections of people like Edgar Allan Poe, then I'd read Charles Dickens, then I'd read uh, Herman Melville, and I'd read Ernest Hemingway and William Faulkner. You know, it would just go from person to person to person. And uh, I think my my favorite, the type of writer that I really like is, uh, I, I really like William Faulkner. He's from the South, you know, and just the, the way his poetry of his language and the type of people he's describing, it's like people that I knew. So it's it's a. Uh, I like his writing. I like Hemingway too for the short sentences. Just the style is like Lester Young's style in jazz, whereas William Faulkner's style is more like Art Tatum or Coltrane, like real virtuosic runs or these long two-hour sentences. And uh, but uh, now I'm, I'll, I'll read really anything. But I don't I don't like to read science fiction too much though. I've never really been into that. I didn't think aesthetically. I just wanted to be a musician. I'm always trying to study. And when I came to New York, I was fortunate enough to meet Stanley Crouch first, who's a writer, who had a tremendous influence on me intellectually because he had like a million books in his apartment and a thousand records. So when I met him, it's all the records and books and stuff. And he was, he didn't graduate from college either. Now he just will voraciously read books, and every time I see him, he'd be talking about, yeah, man, you check this book out, and I didn't know any of this stuff, so I always felt stupid when I was around him. And uh, he, he knew more about the music than I knew. This is when I was 17 and 18. He would be saying, well, what about this record? Uh, so I, him and also Albert Murray, who, who was like Stanley Crouch's mentor, and Albert Murray has written the greatest books on jazz, is Stomping the Blues, which is on blues, but it's one of the greatest books written about the, the, the poetics of jazz music, what the musician should be trying to do. And uh, from from having the opportunity to be around Stanley and Albert Murray, but Stanley much more than Albert Murray, because I'm always too embarrassed to be around him because he knows so much. I always feel like I'm just in the way. Um, it made me really d develop my intellectual curiosity. And Al Murray would give me books to read and tell me where to go. And if it's an important exhibit in town, I said, "Man, you need to go check this out." Or, I talk to Stanley almost every day, and he's, he's, we never talk about just anything. It's always something definite. Yeah, man, did you check out this new Romare Bearden book that they put out? Or, like we always, he keeps me on a certain uh, 
level of, of intellectual engagement and always understand that you have to constantly work to develop your intellect and just increase your curiosity. Like I remember when I was 20 and 21, I hated to travel. I used to, I'd be in Italy and I'd be having a terrible time. Man, I hate being there. I want to be back in New Orleans eating a po' boy sandwich. And he would always say, man, you just country and provincial. <laughs> You know, you can't, if you're going to be sophisticated and be a man out there in the world, you have to learn how to, how to deal with what's going on out here. You need to get some education, get you some books on Italy, and learn what's going on. Go see some, some, some frescoes, Piero della Francesca or something. Don't just sit in your in a hotel room talking about a po' boy sandwich or some gumbo. And uh, I, I'm really indebted to, to Stanley for a lot of things in terms of really dealing with a level of intellectual engagement.